performance, this heroic. I think and he was talking generally about the season. How do you think he has progressed? And was that Penn State game his best performance of the year? Um, I don't, I don't know if it was his uh, best performance, but he certainly played, uh, played well enough to put ourselves in position to win that game, um, which I'm, you know, I'm happy about. And, um, he's progressed all year. Uh, we focus on that a lot. Um, just, just trying to get better every week. Uh, we talk about not, you know, you're not going to be, you're not going to be the same at the beginning of the year that you are at the end of the year. Uh, and hopefully, we're getting better all the way through. And I think he's doing that. Chase said he was finally healthy on Saturday versus Penn State. How has that limited him this, this season from your standpoint? Um, I, I tell everybody the same thing. Uh, he doesn't he doesn't talk to me a whole bunch about it. Uh, he puts his helmet on and tells me he's ready to go. And um, that's kind of um, I, I know him that way. And uh, um, you know he's tough and, and you know everybody's got some bumps and bruises that they're dealing with, especially halfway through the season. So um, I think he's. You know, I think he's he's healthy. I'm glad he feels healthy. And, um, but you know, I think everybody's dealing with something. What did you like the most about what he did Saturday? Um, I just I thought he played tough. I thought he had great presence to him. Um, and I think I think you could feel that from him. Uh, he he loved being uh, in the environment. Um, had had great poise and and. Uh, and presence to him as we were fighting back to get in that game and, and put ourselves in position there at the end. So um, it was it was really neat to see. He was he was very comfortable, very confident, very um, had great energy about you know uh, trying to win that game. Dylan missed a few games with the concussion and, and had some time off. Where is he right now? And if he's I imagine he's the backup. So he's yeah, he's doing he's doing good. He's doing good. Uh, he's been back for a little bit now and um, he's healthy and. I think he feels good. What's it like working with an OC who doesn't have QB position coaching experience? And is there a bit of a learning curve there when um, even kind of organizing the offense without maybe having that experience available? Um, yeah, I don't. Um, I don't know exactly what the what the question is, but I mean, you know, Josh has uh, football experience, you know, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, he has he has knowledge of the offense and how the quarterback should should function in the offense, and that's what um, he feeds to me, and I try to feed uh, to the quarterbacks. Um, Josh could coach quarterbacks, you know, um, if he wanted to. So um, I think he does a good job of, of um, you know providing a vision for the offense, and then all of us as assistants uh, try and feed that to to the players to get them to play the best uh, within the system. What makes you believe that he could coach quarterbacks? Um, you know, just his knowledge of football, you know, and his experience, and uh, you know, uh, you know, the systems he's been in, and uh, his experience. He, he has, you know, plenty of versatility. It was a couple of weeks ago now, but what were some of your takeaways from seeing Joe Milton for an extended period of time against Rutgers? Um, it was good for him to get that experience. Uh, there's nothing like game reps. Um, doesn't matter how much we practice. There's nothing quite like game reps. So. I was glad for him to get an opportunity to get snaps uh, in a game. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can't you can't uh, simulate in practice. Um, and uh, you know, it was great to see him see him in there, execute some plays, uh, made some mistakes. Uh, that's to be expected. But every rep that he can get in a game is valuable for him. Um, you know, because of his lack of experience at this point in college football. We saw the two quarterback package a bit earlier in the season. Is that kind of out of the mix right now, or could we see it again? We'll see. <laughs> Shea on Saturday it seemed like he wasn't afraid to take some risks when he needed to, like that 35 yard throw to Ronnie on third down, but he had a lot of time to kind of think and go through his reads and make some smart choices too. Like, how have you seen him balance maybe taking the risks versus being smart and then how he's improved in that this season? Um, yeah, I think. Uh, I think that, I think that's every um, that's every snap. You know, there's an evaluation of um, you know taking risk, um, calculated risk, smart risk versus not smart risk. Um, the situation dictates that um, throughout the game. Um, you know, third down is different than the red area. Is different than first and second down. Um, is different than two minute. Is different than uh, being down or up in the game. So. I think the the situation changes throughout the game, and as a quarterback, you have to you know you have to calculate that uh, really down to down. And um, 
he did that you know pretty well um, the other night. Um, but he, he has to do that every game, um, every time we every time we go out there, every series. I heard a lot about Joe putting that touch on his throws. Um, what does that look like, and how much impact have you had in that practice? Um, I, he's just he's worked you know at it. Um, you know I think he would I think he would say that that you know that's that's something he's been he's been trying to work on. Uh, he has great arm strength. Um, that's easy for him. Um, you know, so you know, there's there's always a list of things that every quarterback is working on. Um, that's one of the things he's been working on. And I think he's been getting better at that um, for sure over the past several weeks. How, how does someone work on that adding touch? Um, you know, I think I think one is is uh, knowing that you know you, you have to because uh, I think there's a, a calculated uh, way in which you throw the ball um, as far as the RPMs that you put on the ball, um, how how the ball leaves your hand. Uh, the trajectory at which it leaves your hand, um, you know. So I think that there's something very concrete about how you think about that throw mentally, um, and then you know we try and drill it um, as much as we can in different ways. Um, I'm I'm the kind of guy that that invents a drill as as my players need something. Um, I just try and think of something that that will help them work on something. Um, I think. We've we've had to do some of that. It's been fun, but he's he's done a good job of working on it. You mentioned RPMs. Do you guys measure that when you're looking at touch? How hard a guy throws it? Um, we don't. We don't. Um, we probably should in this uh, 21st century. Everything <laughs> gets measured by numbers and and uh, machines and calculations. Um, but we don't. You, as a coach, you can you, you can visually you know know and see um, the change in velocity um, on different throws. We haven't heard a lot about Kate, obviously, yet, but what have you seen from his progression through his first year? He's done great. Um, he's done great. He's really smart, uh, loves football, works at it. Um, you know, and you see that in the meeting room every day. You see that out on the field. Um, you see that him putting in time um, to prepare himself every week. So uh, he's done great. Does he have some shade to his game? His high school tape, he was all over the field making plays on the run. Um, yeah, I try not to compare them to each other. Um, you know, they're they're they e each their own individual, um, and their their skill sets are uh, sometimes similar, but um, you know, most times, you know, they're they're very different from each other in, in what they do really well or what they're each working on. Um, but he's, uh, you know, he has some of those traits, um, you know, but but he's his own guy. How has Shea developed uh, from just getting the ball out quickly um, over the course of this season? Um, it, it's something we've talked uh, we've talked about and we've worked we've worked on really all off season. Um, I think he's he's always been very comfortable playing uh, playing off schedule. Um, he's very athletic and, and does a great job playing off off schedule uh, well when he's on the move. And um, it was something that you know, he wanted to put focus to and I wanted to put focus to. And I think he's. He's done a good job of progressing that way. I think in the in the most critical moments in a lot of games, you gotta you gotta play quarterback that way, you know, and, and understand what your eyes are looking at, and, and uh, be able to be able to go, you know, go uh, put the ball where you need to put it based on uh, based on what your eyes are telling you about the defense. And, uh, he's done a good job. How, how do you balance the you know the full field reads versus just you know making that quick decision and you know just just a lot you know getting the ball out quickly I mean mm -hmm. and making the play yeah we have a lot of we have a lot of different reads in the system um, you know some of which are, are you know one side of the field or um, or full uh, full field reads but um, you know regardless of the read um, I think what you can gather about what you know about the defense before you have the ball in your hand uh, speeds up your process after the after the snap and um, however, however long that that progression is, um, you know, on paper, uh, it can be as fast as you want it to be based on what you know about the defense before you have the ball, and that's what we focus a lot on. Mm -hmm. Got time for a couple more? That's the step last year, Dana. What were your responsibilities of that role? I mean, how did that help carry you the coaching job this year? Mm -hmm. I was working with the receivers and, and Coach McElwain and um, and really supporting the offensive staff in and, and really uh, any way I could at that point. Um, you know, helping in any game plan responsibilities that they gave me, um, and uh, I think uh, just being in the building was helpful. You know, uh, for me, for sure. 
uh, to be around the coaches, to be around uh, you know our culture, and and um, and then transition to coaching the quarterbacks. They knew me, you know. I think uh, I think that was helpful, uh, despite not having coached them last year. How involved are you in the quarterback run part of the of this offense, both in terms of teaching how to do it, and then also maybe input how often it should be used, stuff like that. Yeah, I think uh, we're all part of the thoughts that go into the into the game plans and. Um, I try and be as, as helpful and, and a, as much a piece of that as I can, uh, but we're all a part of the, the game planning. And um, um, but yeah, we we're coaching up all of it. We're coaching up the passing game. We're coaching up the running game. Um, any any responsibility we have as quarterback, we're coaching that up. How long have you been going on your pregame stadium runs for? <laughs> uh, it's funny you say that. So I had to take I took last week off. Uh, my, our trainers tell, tell me I'm dealing with uh, plantar fasciitis, which oh, has <laughs> uh, not been fun. For the past couple weeks. So I actually took off last week, uh, which did not, you know, that didn't thrill me. I've, I have been going on these runs. I, I try and run on game days as long as as long as we get to the stadium and I get to the stadium early enough. Uh, it helps me get some energy out, um, but I kind of look at it as. I don't. I don't exercise as much as I would like to during during the week. Uh, as busy as the week is, so I kind of feel like I owe it to my kids uh, <laughs> to stress my heart a little bit, and uh, and so that's what my game day runs are about. Do, you, do other coaches? Do other coaches do it too? Or? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if there's any others uh, in our building. Uh, you know, a lot of buildings I've been in uh, prior. There's, you know, I've I've been on staffs that the guys you know try and get a workout in or try and get some cardio in. Um, as, as funny as it sounds, sometimes game day, there's windows of time on game day that are as good of windows to do that as uh, really any other day of the week. How long are you on the deal? Question. All right, maybe you can ask your two-part question. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's, I'm hoping not long. I'm, I, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm hoping not, not long, but I don't know that we've decided how long that is. <laughs> My other question is, Jim felt compelled to send a letter to recruits saying you know, rumors yesterday, or the story was crap. Did you hear from recruits? Did you have to do squash or anything? Um, no, not really. Um, I think I think all of our recruits at this point are are very aware of uh, this being a cyclical thing uh, every year. Um, you know them, them. Uh, you know the, some of that storyline uh, getting out, but I just I just know I'm glad he's here. I know I'm glad I'm here.